everybody. Good morning. I'm Monica with that hashtag show. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you so much. So uh, my first question is for the three of you. In many ways, George Lopez paved the way for Latinx representation on screen. You personally to walk onto set with him. Who wants to go first? Oof. I mean, for me, it was a dream come true. Very different. Like, yeah. such a different. Go ahead. Go hard. It's such a I, I For me, it was like a dream come true because I grew up watching... George Lopez and uh, not seeing a lot of representation on screen, especially someone who looks like you, talks like you and has the same background. And uh, uh, it was very limited and uh, very aspirational for me uh, because without him kind of paving the way, um, it would have made it just uh, unattainable. I think a lot of Latinos is, uh, uh, being Mexican myself, it was just uh, hard to see yourself. And, you know, me specifically because being, you know, Mexican, uh, being and being queer were all things that were always told strikes against me. So they were like, don't show that you're this, don't show you that. And I was, these are not my strikes, they're my strengths. And so to now be on a show with George and to play a family member, a family member, it's kind of like surreal. And uh, and Envy this summer actually did Blue Beetle as well, but I was already freaking out about that. But doing the show, like doing the actual three cam, because I grew up watching the George Lopez show, like song that opening number is iconic and every time i hear that song it just triggers my memory to the to the show over and over so for me it was a dream come true no yeah for me it's crazy because i grew up watching the show but i also have been in the business since i was a kid so i've technically known george lopez for like 20 years i've met him here and there at events he just never remembers because I was like eight and then i was like 12 and then i was like 15 (laughs) so um You know, when I got to officially work with him for the first time on Tax Collector, I didn't really get to interact with him, but we all like are on scenes, but we were all like out and stuff. So to actually have a scene with him and like Harvey said, to be related to him when like you always felt like you were related to George, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, you know, he's he's the old George. And it was such a a dream to actually kind of have that. And, you know, one of the last scenes when everybody's in the kitchen was just like, to look over at Jess and Harvey and George and Ian and Matt and then Bryce walking in. Like, it was just a dream. Like, oh, like it was beautiful. Definitely pinch me moment for sure. Um, I feel like uh, I make this joke a lot, but I've seen George Lopez on my TV more than I've seen my father. So <laughs> very, so he very much was like a father figure to me, whether he knew that or not. And specifically the George Lopez show, because that was the first time I felt like Um, I was represented because my dad's Mexican, my mom's Cuban. So it was very like those jokes rang really true, true for me. So um, I always dreamt of like, you know, being an actor, but I didn't think I'd ever get to the point where I would be on the same set with him. So there was a a few times where we were, you know, in front of the live audience and he's sitting next to me and we were supposed to hug. And it's just, is this really happening? Like it's, it's bizarre, but it also feels really good. And it's a, it's a little bit of like a pat on the back and like, you know, you know, thank God moment. Sure. How exciting. And then also for the three of you, um, one of the things that I found really interesting about this episode was the different personalities that the primos have. Um, what was it like bringing these like personalities to life? I mean, I, I, I was just in awe watching, you know, these two like perform because it was so like you know different from what they usually play like Chelsea like she said it's something that she had you know doesn't usually play so to watch her do this was so nice to like see her blossom into like this character that I was like oh my god this is so great because you haven't done this and for me I usually don't play this kind of character um you know I usually play very quiet submissive you know and for him to be so big and uh studies and like you know and it was just nice to play that bigger than life character and and the same with Jess just because she you know her comic timing is so great to watch her play this influencer uh I was more I think I was more entertained just by going to rehearsals and watching uh these two artists perform than than anything it was uh it was just like a treat every day it was just great I totally agree with everything Harvey said, especially all the compliments he gave me. Um, <laughs> no, it, it really was because, you know, if I could speak for Chelsea, like she was a little nervous because she was like, you know, I haven't really done this before. And it was a water. Like she really put her all into it. And it felt, 
it felt so good to see her on that day when we were about to perform and her being like, oh, I feel it. No, I feel her now. Like, I get it. Like, I'm in this. Like, I like I was just so proud of her. Yeah. Um, but no, it was fun for me playing a character I haven't played before. I never get to be like a girly girl. Um, I'm typ- typically, you know, someone people are running away from for one reason <laughs> or another. Um, you know, whatever. But uh, no, it was fun. It, it was really fun to be somebody that maybe, you know, our, our primo was looking up to in a way before everything came crashing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jess is right. I I have never done a sitcom or a multicam. Like the last time and like only time I performed in front of a live audience was in middle school and like the Christmas play. So I was super nervous. So I was holding on to Jess like a security blanket, like a little baby blanket. <laughs> and then like to like officially connect with Harvey and seeing them like I was just watching I was just learning from both of them the entire time and uh when I really like connected to the character it was just so much fun and then we were all just like in it and we're like Ugh. and we feel like family too because in those you know those first days when like Jess said like with Chelsea was like you know, she she's such a perfectionist when it comes to her art too. You can see that she's printing the work every day. And so she's like, was that good? And it's like, he's like, you're doing great. You're doing, and so that confirmation that you kind of only get, you know, you don't always get that on set. You know, I think uh, it, it goes to, um, without saying, because being Latinos and being, you know, we really do tend to support each other and we're there to uplift each other. And so I really felt like a, like we were becoming family from day one, like day one, I remember rehearsal. It was just like, you got this, you got, you know, don't worry about it. You're doing great. And it's like, how was that? Was that, is that how that was like, you're doing fantastic. Like, it's like, that's the kind of positive affirmation you want on set, which yeah. is not always the case that you get. And so on the George Lopez set and Lopez versus Lopez, you, you get that. And which is really great. And uh, it made the experience even more delightful. Yeah. Um, and all the scene, Jen and Harvey still also asking, like, was that funny or did that play well or this? Like, it made me feel more confident. Like, oh, it's not just me. Like, wait, was that funny? Like, Mm -hmm. oh, wait, you know what I mean? Like, it's just part of the the structure of also MoCam where you get to be like, oh, was that good? Because if not, I'm going to go a different direction, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you guys were so funny and so great. It was like a treat to watch. I'm excited. I hope the primos come back in other episodes because that would be amazing. Um, and then I guess the last question I have is for Harvey. Just to wrap things up, your audience was absolutely epic, and amazing and beautiful. Um, can you just tell me really quick how you did on that look? Because it was perfect. Well, I know I wanted uh, Christian Soriano to, to design it. And a thing in itself and I, I did my research and found out that he has never designed for a plus size male and so we made history at the Oscars where it was the first time he's dressed a plus size male ever and I'm glad to report that it was executed perfectly we made Vogue's like list and we made so many lists of like best dress um allure all female dress beautifully of course and one male and that was me and I was just like it's kind of crazy to think about that you know just a couple months ago that wasn't even a possibility. And then the conversation started and we talked about it, put it together. And I went with uh, um, a stylist and Michael Fusco, who's amazing. And my hair and makeup team that I've been working forever, Romy and Connie, who do fantastic work. And they've been with me for years. Romy and I have been friends since fourth grade and she's my makeup artist. <laughs> so we did a before and after like, where it started, which was in high school doing your good man, Charlie Brown. She did my makeup and I was Charlie. And how it's going. And <laughs> we're uh, at the carpet at the Academy Awards. So it's come full circle. And um, and even the Vanity Fair look as well. I went from like, like it was like a nod to like someone in the 1920s who was vintage in the 1920s, which was the gilded. So it was gilded age bottom, 1920s top. So imagine when someone in that time would have done a throwback. And I like the idea of uh, recreating history looks. We weren't represented. We don't see a lot of Latinos that were in the carpet in the 20s and the 30s. We don't see them in the office. Um, so I wanted to revisit uh, history and maybe uh, revisit and redo. Let's say redo of it. And I, I'm proud of the work we did. And and the Vanity Fair was just me in underwear suit. <laughs> so. Well, it was wonderful. Thank you all so much for taking the time to speak with us. And I hope you have an incredible day. Thanks you so too. much, Monica. Thank you.